it doesn't matter that my tune doesn't sound exactly how I want it or a lot, none of my tunes ever ever sound exactly as I want them to mm. you know you just have to get to a point where you're like okay that's done now really that's the that's best thing <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah. it is such a diff- it is such a difficult thing to overcome but yeah. don't put too much pressure on yourself I would say and we're on Welcome, welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Last Week Liquid podcast. And today I have the immense pleasure of sitting down with Woody, better known as Edward. Woody is a drum and bass producer, singer, multi-instrumentalist, signed to Hospital Records. With four albums under his belt at this stage, he's made a name for himself with his trademark, trademark sound of soft liquid uh, and indie-influenced vocals and guitar. You can catch his latest release, the Neon Dust album, out now on all platforms. Woody, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you. Hello, mate. Thank you very much for having me. I was just very uh, awkwardly asking you if Woody was actually your first name because we've never spoken before. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, I just, that's, everyone knows me as Woody. Um, it's, it's a nickname I've had since I was about six. You know, if my parents call me, it, nobody calls, my real name's Ed, but no one, no one really calls me that anymore. Yeah. So, I feel, yeah. I feel that's a very British thing. I've never heard that elsewhere. Like I spoke with a, a guy named uh, Henry. Yeah. And everybody calls him Harry, but he's, oh, okay. his actual like Christian name is Henry, but everybody's always called him Harry his entire life. I've which... heard that. It's the same with Prince Harry, isn't it? His, his oh, real isn't... name. Yeah, his real name is Henry, I believe. That, like, but that's no. so strange. I don't get it. <laughs> I've, I've never understood that one personally. No, I think the nicknames thing, I think Woody, a lot, the only, it's quite a rare one, but the only other Woodies I know um, have adapted it from their surname. Okay. So yeah, if their yeah. name like Woods, Woodford or Woodstone or something, they get yeah, called yeah. Woodford. Mine was, sense. I think mine was from Edward and it just turned into Woody. I can't remember who, I can't remember where it started, but all my life I've been called Woody. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's cool. Yeah, how are you doing, man? Thanks a lot for your time. Uh, no, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah, really good. Thank you. Um, just enjoying. I just got back from Malta. Um, yeah, so I saw that on your Instagram. It looked pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> it was, it was lovely, mate. Yeah, I just, um, it, I, I'd, I was celebrating the album. Really, I mean, any excuse to go on holiday, but <laughs> I just yeah. thought, let's just go. Kind of a last minute thing. Let's just jump on a plane. And go and chill out there for a bit and it was sort of the caught sort of the back end of the season it was nice and quiet and the weather was just just right it was beautiful yeah mm. how did you decide on on malta had you been there before or? i've never been before no I've, I've heard great things about it and and honestly it was it was more about like a sort of checking through a list of green countries you know mm. and like which oh, yeah, what true. Be. really that it sucks but it was really I'm not taking anything away from Malta, you know, it's somewhere I've always wanted to go, but this just seemed like the right, the right time because, because of the, the, the sort of the lack of regulations really to get there. So it was yeah, very yeah. last minute, my girlfriend and I, were like, let's just book a trip and let's have a quick look and Malta kept popping up. So yeah, we decided yeah. to go. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of struck you the most there? Cause I've never been, but I've heard like great things from friends that, that have been there in the past. It's, um, it's very, it's, there's an, it's a really nice chilled atmosphere there. I think, um, it's, it's the, the sort of the landscape is really interesting because it's, it's a, it's a huge rock really. Yeah. Um, and the, and the, the sea, obviously the Mediterranean is absolutely beautiful and it's warm and there's not so many sort of beaches, but on the, um, like the rocky coast, there's loads of different ways to get into the sea. Mm. it's cool like diving there um and it's just yeah you can tell we took a little boat trip out there's three islands and there's a little one called camino and it's got this beautiful place called the blue lagoon mm. and just the, the water is amazing and the, the the salt content is quite high in the, in the water so you can kind of just float really oh, easily. that's how you were yeah i saw the video you were just kind of floating i never managed yeah. to do that before <laughs> It was just, it was obviously, I'm still sort of holding my breath. It's not like in, I think the Red Sea, isn't it? Where you can, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. float, but it was, it wasn't, it didn't feel far off. It was really, really nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Really, really cool, man. Yeah. And it's been a while. My, a lot of the holidays I go on, I tend to do a lot of hiking and a lot of activities. And this one, we just, we had, there was a nice sun terrace in the hotel we were staying at and we just, we really took it easy. It was really yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, you need to take it easy sometimes and not 
like pack your schedule with all this stuff all the time and yeah you do and you need to you need to sort of make time for it and as a mm. dj now everything started up again and with the release of the album it was kind of now or never you know it's like mm. right, let's quickly let's try and escape for just a few days and yeah it was really cool yeah so how's your how's your schedule been since the since the album release how has the the reception been on the album all of that i've been really really chuffed with it um I try not to get to sort of build up too much expectation before uh, a release comes out, which is quite difficult sometimes. And especially with this one, I suppose I didn't realize it, but a lot of people who had listened to it before it came out said, you know, well, this is actually quite a little bit different to your other stuff. And it's got a bit of a different vibe and there's a lot of non drum and bass on there. And how are you feeling about it? And really I just, I, if you get too bogged down in that in that aspect, it can it can almost change the way you write. So mm. I just sort of sit down and try and get all that out out of my head while I'm writing, and just try and just be me, whatever that is at that time. So I'm really I'm really over the moon with the reception. It's been fantastic. You know, it mm. seems to be going down well, and a lot of people seem to have connected with it quite quickly, which is awesome. Yeah, really yeah. pleased. Yeah. How, how did it feel to actually play the tracks live? Because I know you probably didn't have the a lot of opportunities beforehand to actually play them out. Yeah, no, you're right. That was um, it was amazing, really hearing them for the first time. I think the the first weekend back um, in the UK for shows was uh, I was playing a festival called Stand and Calling, and it was a two hour set. I was actually filling in for London Electricity, but mm. it meant that I could play. I played loads of album tunes and obviously I'd never heard them on a system before. And it's, it was just a great feeling. And that was before, before the album had come out. So no one really knew what the tunes were, but yeah, yeah. still, it was still, I was just there sort of vibing away in the booth and it felt, it yeah. felt great. Yeah. It, in that moment, is it like, a, um, well, is it like just pure like joy and excitement of hearing your tunes on a big speaker for the first time? Or is there also an aspect of like, wow, there's a bit too much bass or oh, <laughs> yeah. I can't really hear this part, like reassessing the, your tracks almost? It's, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty much too late at that point. So yeah, I, think yeah. <laughs> I, sort of, I think I just shut off that aspect of, of analysis and, and just really, yeah, I just enjoyed hearing it on a big system. And you know, like a lot of the time, my when I'm mixing down a tune, I do, I pay, I do pay a lot of attention to how it will sound in the club. But the my tunes aren't writ, they're not written for the club. Yeah, no. So you know, this is, and I have had it before where you, when a tune's even after a tune's been released, and you listen to it and you think that snare, there's not enough weight in that snare, mm. or the bass is not enough, the bass is lacking, or like, oh, that hi hat's too to yeah. scrabbly or something and you can really yeah you can get a bit lost in that whole world so yeah i try not to get too lost in it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you still think that of like really old tunes maybe of yours that you still play out and does it yeah. still kind of creep up of like oh i could have done it this way or honestly yeah the, the first out al- all the tunes on the first album you know it's mad and mm. i still play i still play a few of them now but like begin by letting go for instance yeah. is probably one of the most popular ones of mine. So I always pretty much, I play it in most sets because I think I'd get stuff thrown at me if I didn't a lot of the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> but just when I listen to that now, I mean, I would do it so differently now if I wrote it. If I wrote that song now, there's not, a, there's, you know, it's quite raw really. And, and yeah. it was, a lot of it was intentional, but a lot of it was really unintentional. And it's one of the first tunes I wrote as a producer and, I listen back to it now and I think, wow, I mean, I can't, I can't believe that, uh, you know, that, that was, that's the finished version. You know? Yeah. Then you just, if it was different, it, it wouldn't be, arguably, it wouldn't be as, it wouldn't be as popular and people wouldn't like it as much. And if it could be overproduced and yeah. there could have been a lot more on the vocals and a lot more production here and there, but some, yeah, like I said, you just got to just allow it really. That was, that was yeah. how it sounded at the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I think, think, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say you can do, I, I I do sometimes beef it up ever so slightly sometimes. Like I've got a few versions of it where there's just a bit more weight mm. in the snare and a bit more rolling percussion over the top and it doesn't take anything away from the tune, but it just kind of, yeah. I have sort of club, clubby versions. The club of edit, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's funny what you said that if you didn't play it, you'd probably get chairs thrown at you or something. <laughs> just, just reminded me of like, uh, I often speak about Oasis because they're one of my favorite bands, but uh, yeah. Noel Gallagher often speaks about Don't Look Back in Anger. And if like, he's kind of sick of playing it, honestly, yeah. but it, it's just came comes to a point where if he doesn't play it, he probably doesn't get out alive of the building. So. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do, That's do you, it. Do you still enjoy playing that tune or? I love, I love playing that tune because I love the reaction that it, it gets always and it still gets now. And, and I know for a lot of people, I think there's obviously a lot of people who they just know that tune probably and not, not many of my other tunes, which is obviously mm. fair enough. And it's always the one, like if you meet, I was in my hometown Lincoln and these two guys pulled up and I was filling up the gas and gas, filling up the petrol. And I said, Edward, Edward, Edward. And I'm like, hello. And I turn around and they're, and they're like, oh, it's Edward. And they're like, begin by letting go, mate. Begin by letting go. And then they turn it on in the car and turn it right up. And it's always that tune. Well, it's not always, but a lot of the time it's that tune. And, oh, yeah. yeah, begin by letting go. Begin by letting go. So it's, I, I want to play it because... I, I I do enjoy having everyone having a bit of a sing along and mm. everyone gets the lighters out and stuff. But it's um yeah, I know somebody did say I think there was a period of time where I just I did get a bit sick of it and mm. someone came to me after the show and I said, I've seen you three times and you've never played Begin by Let Go. Like what <laughs> what what's going on? And there was this deep, <laughs> deep concern. And I thought, yeah. I felt I felt guilty. I was like, damn, I'm really sorry. Like if I see you at another show, I'll definitely play it. <laughs> the guy from you know, or something. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's just you know, I I came all the way from, you know, like wherever to see you play today and traveled many many miles and you didn't play the song yeah. i wanted you to play so it's like yeah dude i'm sorry man like my set changes every every gig so <laughs> dude i i had a bit of the same feeling with a actually a, a an artist you your album kind of reminded me of uh ben howard um oh cool and the yeah a lot of your like guitar work and stuff kind of reminds me of his stuff like later yeah. on stuff yeah and I remember I went to see him in concert and he had, I think his third album was out or something and he didn't play The Wolves, which is like his big, big hit from the like yeah. the first album. I know, and I, yeah. I actually almost came out of that concert kind of pissed because there's like a big sing-along in that song and yeah. and apparently he's kind of like, uh, like not acknowledging his first hits because he's moved on and so he doesn't yeah. want to play too much of them. And yeah, I was kind of thinking like, dude, like, that song kind of made you almost and yeah you yeah. kind of owe it to people to play it but then you're also an artist you can do whatever you want it's i don't know yeah. it's weird <laughs> it's really you know as an artist and as a and as and as a, a punter like for lack of a better word you know it's somebody who attends a gig it's i totally see both both sides because i saw well the cure like their latest mm. glastonbury set or one of the glastonbury sets they they openly said as well you know we just, these are the ones that people want to hear. And they kind of just, they announced that they weren't really into it, but that they had to play it. Yeah. And then I got, I, I, I saw Bob Dylan once and he just, he didn't play anything other than his latest album. Yeah. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a he, fuck. He just doesn't care. You know, <laughs> and I think Radiohead as well. I've heard a lot of artists talk about this thing. And when your sound changes a lot and you, you change a lot as an artist, obviously, and your personality is changing. And really that's the thing, like my sound on the sound of Neon Dust really to me sounds very different to the first album because I'm I'm a completely different person yeah. than I was when I wrote that. So it's it's almost but but at the same time it's I I'm still those songs still mean a lot to me. And I think yeah. if as long as the song means a lot to me, if I there are a few of my songs that I'm I'm not as keen on and I don't play those ones as much because yeah it's it's almost like it feels a bit fake to play to play certain songs but once like begin by letting go i mean that still means as much to me now as it did when i wrote it so yeah. it's it's a really it's a really difficult um difficult thing to to kind of get right i think yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of that like venn diagram of the stuff you want to do as an artist and having yeah. full freedom but then yeah. also what people want to hear from you Exactly, and you can't be doing only one side or the other. You have to kind of meet in the middle and then yeah. move from one side to the other. And 
it's uh, a it's it's a topic I could talk about for hours. Really, I mean that's <laughs> that's a podcast in itself because it is really it, it. There are yeah, there are the the complete extremes, and and then obviously, are you are you sort of by meeting in the middle? Are you watering yourself down too much? You know, is it does it get a bit murky when they those two things try and merge? And it's 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 really I think you've got to almost decide from the onset. You know from the outset like this is the kind of artist i'm going to be and i'm just going to be like bob dylan or someone that just says i'm just going to be me and and you know f fuck the rest you know basically yeah. and that's 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 just that's not who i am as a person and i think yeah. it would be difficult for me to do that because you want to please as well as an artist so it is it is a weird one yeah how, mm -hmm. how, how does that uh, translate in the actual writing process then? Because here, like I was referencing more like when what people want to hear during a concert and what you want to play. Yeah. But when you're actually in the writing process, I guess it's it's more important to be on the side of I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> uh, is. It is. I think um, with this one, Hospital, um, they I felt like a lot of freedom to do they kind of said, look, you're, this is your fourth album. The last three have all been really well received and you've got your sound and you've got your fan base. So just, just do you basically. Um, and we start, we had about 50 songs. Mm. Um, and that's why the album's so big because we really couldn't get it any less than 20 because it, it was, it was hard enough to get down to that. Um, and I thought I I tend not to listen. I don't listen to any of my my music ever. So I suppose I don't have a kind of a, a continuing idea of what my music sounds like to everyone else. So and it's really it's a di every album is a, a diary. It's a particular um, a message and a and a reflection of of my life at that time. Um, so it's. The only thing I suppose what I'm referring to is if you're changing as an artist in some way. And my mum actually, sometimes she says, you know, just have a listen through your first album mm. and just listen and then listen to some of the ones on this new album and, and see if you think they're too different or she's not sort of saying, you know, it's, you need to write more songs like your first album. But I think that was with that first album, I, I sort of inadvertently established a specific vibe, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I feel is, I, I do feel that that continues, but it's, it, there's obviously a lot of subtle changes throughout, but, yeah. um, but I think I don't, I don't tend to write, um, I suppose. Yeah. It's, it's a tricky one. I mean, I love, I understand that like there are certain instruments, for instance, like a like piano and guitar and vocals that are very uh, sort of my signature, I suppose. Mm. I think as long as, as long as those aspects are in there, then I'm kind of doing my own thing, but also writing music that other, I think the yeah, you know, people band, are going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's a, it's again, it's, yeah, it's such a tricky thing. Yeah, There's a lot yeah. of the time I just want to do like an instrumental album really. And, and then I think, yeah. oh, but people want to hear your voice. They want to hear you sing. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'll add a few of them in there. Yeah. And then it goes the other way and it's like, oh, well, wh 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 where's all the instrumental stuff? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, this is, this is literally, this is just what I wrote at this particular time. And, yeah. and really that's that, you know? Yeah. And sometimes it's even hard to figure if you're doing something because you really want to do it or if it's to please people, it's not like a really black and white and no. I'm not talking about music. Let's just be on that. Like it's hard to know sometimes is yeah. this really what I want to do in this moment or I'm, yeah. am I just trying to please people? It's exactly. A hard one. It's a really hard one. And I think at a very basic level, we do, we do want to please people and we, you know, we don't want to isolate ourselves really naturally. It's not a very human characteristic, you know, um, so I think we, we're always battling with that. Who am I? And, yeah. um, am I just doing this because this is other people have, you know, advised me or convinced me or have I been sort of pushed into this direction or have I actually come here of my own accord? And that's, that is, that's quite a difficult thing to analyze sometimes. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm curious, like, because of, as you mentioned, your first album was was quite a signature sound from the start and the first track begin by letting go on that first album was like 
a big statement of who you were and, and your yeah. sound. Did yeah. you ever feel kind of, I don't know, maybe trapped afterwards by, by that sound that kind of defined you and kind of felt like you had to continue in that vein or was that just a hundred percent who you were and you just kept on going? Yeah, I think that was, that was the, the bottom line is that that song was, that was my soul in a song really without sounding too cheesy. It was, that was who I am. And that was why, and that's why I was so bloody overwhelmed when people were relating to it because I thought, few you know if people hated this then what am i going to do and i've got to switch it up and i'll try some other stuff and yeah. write some deeper stuff and some techier stuff and just keep messing around until something works but mm. that really just that's why I've, i i writing comes so naturally to me and and again why i don't get too worked up around the release because as you said that first album was so me yeah And again, like, although I've changed a lot, I'm still at my core, you know, my beliefs and my, my essence, I suppose, is still very similar, yeah. um, especially in the, in the way that I write music. So it's a bit of a relief, to be quite honest, that I've never felt. Mm. I think but perhaps with Blue Leaves, there was, a, there was a, a slight tendency with some of the, particularly like Light My Way Home, I remember thinking, oh, this this could potentially be a bit of a crossover tune, you know, it could get some radio play. And, and I think there was a part of me that, that wanted that actually, mm. um, to go down a, perhaps a slightly more commercial route, but it was, that song was still very much me, you know? And, mm -hmm. and then I think after that within stillness, it was very much a sort of another retreat and going back to trying to forget about all of that and just concentrate on writing the music that I wanted to write. Yeah. Mm. But it's an interesting question. Yeah. I think if I never, I've never felt pressured since then to, to yeah. carry on with that vibe. I think it just, it's luckily it's just always <laughs> been that vibe since then. Yeah. I suppose. Mm. I guess, yeah. I guess it's a, uh, it must be so reassuring to like put out something that's so a hundred percent yourself and your soul. And yeah. then that being the format or whatever that connects with people. And yeah, that kind of, it, it's just kind of saying, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, basically. Yeah. If you were to do something else and nobody resonates with it, then you're like, yeah, okay, where do I go from here? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's totally it. And that's why I just think as a musician, you just have to be honest and you have to be you. Yeah. And really, yeah, if no one likes it and no one listens to it, it's still, it's still you and that's just fine. Mm. And, and that's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah, because it really is. You 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 know you 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 lay everything on the line. And, you know the first, that first I put spoken came out on a, f a free EP that I just put out, and um, it was with my friend Jack Wob, and he he was promoting it a little bit, and and I was petrified really because it was, it's not quite the same, but it's like it is like writing a diary really, and and putting it online for everyone to see. It's mm. about creating something that's very raw. And it's come from a very emotional place and letting everyone in the world listen to it really. It's yeah. a quite a quite a mad experience. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you yeah. never know, you don't know what you're gonna get back. And obviously people do dwell on negative comments a lot. And I think that I've been quite lucky. You know, I know there's a lot of real DB heads that would say, you know, these songs are a bit poppy or they're not, there's too much singing or they the drums don't punch enough or the production's not quite spot on or any any of those things. But The majority of comments are always very, they're very positive. So it's, it's, yeah. it's great. Mm. Yeah. And that's the great thing I think with drone bass is you can kind of make it fit so many different like genres and vibes and stuff. You, if you want to go the really old school jungle or the deep minimum yeah. techie stuff or the yeah. more folk, uh, indie stuff that you do, yeah. you can all make it fit in, in drum and bass. So if people don't like it, it they can still listen to drum and bass, just another yeah. type. <laughs> That's the thing. There's so much drum and bass out there. You know, there's no need to get bogged down on yeah, exactly, a particular yeah. artist sounds like it's like, we're just going to listen to something else. Yeah. You know, that's it. It really is. Um, but yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's, um, it's awesome. Just stay on the, the writing process for a second for, for this album, Neon Dust. Uh, how did the, How, how did your experience, uh, I think it was in Cornwall in a, in a cabin in yeah. Cornwall. How did that differ from the past one, which was in a cabin in, in Finland? What were like the big differences for you in those two experiences? 
it was really strange because the um the when I went to Finland it was very much I'm going here to write an album you know didn't want to put too much pressure on it but I knew that I needed a retreat and because of the pandemic like the I, my um my inspiration just completely plummeted you know I, I get a lot of inspiration from travel so we obviously weren't going anywhere and I just sat down, I, could, I was forcing myself to try and write and it just didn't feel right. And the whole, obviously the mood was just really down, like really low and like all the way across the world. And there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of positivity and, and I didn't like to write. I could have, I suppose, used that and written about it essentially and used mm. that as a topic of, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted my next album to be quite a positive thing. And I was thinking about just really just trying to wait and not write anything until, you know, everything starts to get a little bit better. Um, so it was, when I went away to Cornwall, it was a bit of a last minute thing. It was, it was kind of, it was, I, I think I wanted to be by the sea mm -hmm. and I felt that being by the ocean would, would create this sort of freedom and this real, it's almost, almost like blowing the cobwebs away, actually. Mm. And it, it really did, literally, because because Storm, Storm Alex sort of came and literally, it was, I was staying in a little um, a holiday, it was a little beach hut in a, in a sort of a little holiday park complex thing, right by the sea. And this thing was just getting absolutely <laughs> pummeled by the wind and the rain and the, the thing was shaking the whole time and I just, it really helped. And I was walking by the sea and my hair was all over the place and I was, the wind, the waves were just, it was just really, I was just right there in the elements. And, and then, you know, the next minute in true, you know, British weather style, the sun was shining and it was really hot. Um, so I think the difference was the, a lot of it was to do with the weather, I think. Yeah. Um, and really, it sounds pretty mad, but the, in Finland, it was very calm um, and it was very isolated and I felt very free. But with this one, there was a lot of the, a lot of emotions were being sort of shaken up. And, mm. and I was I'm meditating a lot. And I, I was, as I was meditating, you know, I could hear all this, all the wind around and the, the, certain things were shaking around and it was quite it was quite inspiring actually mm. um and the moon it's again the moon and the stars there's quite a as i was writing the songs i felt that a lot of them had kind of a quite a spacey almost like a sort of galactic kind of feel mm. because the 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 sky was so clear and the moon was pretty much full for at least like a pretty much full for about three or four days during that break mm. and the 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 room I was in this was a sort of a porch which just had windows all the way around and you could see the moon it was beautiful so I actually did a lot of writing at night time mm -hmm. which I didn't do in Finland um and it's strange because it wasn't a, I wasn't like right I need to go and find a hut somewhere and try and sort of <laughs> scrabble around with that inspiration that I had within stillness you know yeah, where's yeah. the closest hut that I can find <laughs> in England <laughs> you I, know, I, I've cracked a formula let me find another <laughs> exactly <hut. laughs> yeah right I've tried everything else like where's the hut you know well there's a I've got a shed down the bottom of the garden I could go in there for a bit <laughs> as long as I'm on my own not exactly the same. No, yeah it was quite um quite a or quite a natural thing really but i knew i knew i needed to just get away um and just be just be just be completely um i don't know what the word is just blown around a bit yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sh shaken up a bit or, yeah. shaken up exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Do, do you feel it's quite important for you or f for people in general to be able to like spend time alone because i feel it's in our society, it's something we try to avoid, like being alone doesn't feel comfortable and we have to be surrounded by people or yeah. music or television or stuff. And it feels like you actively seek that uh, loneliness, uh, yeah. like in Finland and, and now. I don't know if it's that's, a, yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It's, a, it's, it's always been a big thing for me. Um, I've, I love people and I love being around people and I'm quite a social person but also I absolutely adore my own company really um 
with outstanding. I know that can sound a bit egotistical, but it's it's just being well, not your own company essentially, but being just on your own and being it's the quietness that I enjoy. Mm. The complete silence. And when I was in Cornwall, I turned my phone off, you know, let everyone know that I wasn't in any danger or trouble or anything, and turn my phone off for three two or three days. I did it in Finland as well. And you know, turned like had no idea what the time was at all and, and just kind of kind of lose yourself in mm. yourself in a way. Yeah. Um and especially for writing, um, that's that's at the place where I write the best. And that's when I, that's the place where I feel most inspired because <clears throat> um I don't rely too much on sort of I rely a lot on nature, but I don't I find it difficult to go into a studio every day in a certain place and write music mm. um if you take yourself away from the situation that you're normally in is a big part of it but yeah i um i really enjoy spending time on my own yeah, yeah i do think i do think it's important and i think it's important to to allow yourself a bit of time on your own sometimes and as yeah. you say just turn everything off turn the telly off turn your phone off uh, you know, reading is cool, and then writing. But again, like when I'm when I was in Finland and when I was in Cornwall, I just did nothing but write. I would wake up in the morning, I would write music all day, and then I'd go to sleep. So there wasn't really any time for anything else, mm. which I think is amazing. And, and to do that for a few days, you, you you've got no distractions basically. Yeah. I think a lot of people vibe. They have writing sessions in the studio, and they really vibe off other people, and they vibe off. Um, the energy that's created when when quite a few of you are working on a tune um but i think i've always sort of struggled a little bit in those situations and i'm kind of i get a bit lost for ideas a lot of the time and there's that's that level of pressure there as well when you're with other yeah. people to to get something especially when you have a studio session yeah. when you're on your own you can just go at your own pace and it's very relaxed actually yeah yeah yeah. You ju- you just talked about reading and and obviously traveling. You've talked a lot about traveling in previous interviews and how it's important for you. Uh I have a book here in front of me which you you might recognize. I don't know if you've oh, seen yeah. this book. Yeah, man, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Mike, what a legend. Uh, for people who are just listening to the audio version, can you uh tell people what this book is about? Yeah, yeah. So How to Live in a Van and Travel by um Mike Hudson, isn't it? uh i forgot his name yeah that's it mike hudson. yeah mike hudson yeah Van Dyke Traveler. Yeah. yeah so i've got a really funny story um basically a few years ago i did a meditative vipassana meditation retreat which is a 10-day silent meditation retreat in um herefordshire it was and a center called dharma deeper center so you essentially wake up at four and you meditate all day and go to bed at about nine you know with meals and no one talks to each other. Yeah. And I was sitting next to a guy sitting next to me. He had long hair, sort of similar to mine, all like tied up. And and we sort of, you kind of bond with the people who are sitting around you, even though you can't talk to them. And we were sort of, he was always meditating and I was always meditating at the same time. And you had the opportunity to go away to your sort of quarters, if you like, and you could you can meditate back there. But we were, there was this sort of hardcore group of us in the corner that were, <laughs> that was sort of always meditating and at the end of the um on the last day you, you can actually talk um spend a few hours where you you, you know the the sort of the restrictions are lifted and you can mm. chat to each other and get to know each other and i was talking to this guy and he was like yeah i live in a van and i was like oh cool i live in a van too and he was like oh is yours parked here and i said no and his was parked here and he was traveling off somewhere else um, and we didn't stay in touch, unfortunately. We had a big group, WhatsApp group for a lot of a few of the people, but he he wasn't a member of the group. So we lost touch. And then my girlfriend was sort of talking about this guy, Mike, Van Dog Traveller. And and that that was it wasn't long after this, after the retreat. And I, at, at that point I hadn't really put two and two together. And he was like, Yeah, he lives in a van. And and then I just all of a sudden it, this thing just clicked. After I'd bought and read that book. Yeah. Something clicked and I was like, I know this guy. <laughs> this guy, Mike, I meditated next to him for 10 days. And I That's messaged crazy. him. 
it was so so weird and i read his book and we downloaded his ebook and that's what we've been using a lot for our conversion yeah and i messaged him on instagram and i said did you do a vipassana retreat in june 2018 are you the guy <laughs> yeah and, it, and we were sitting right next to each other and he was like oh i, I vaguely remember a guy called woody who lived in a van and i was like yeah that was that's me. insane it was so bizarre <laughs> yeah what an absolute legend he is yeah he's been i mean his books are incredible yeah if if anyone is even remotely thinking about living in a van, you know, or, or even just converting a van, like he, he, he's been doing it for ages. And I mean, he's, he did it. He really, really did it. He bought a really crusty old van that was yeah. really rusted and patched up all the holes, did everything. And he did it really on a budget as well. Like he's really inspiring. Mm. He's, he's absolutely nailed it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it's it's, legend. it's it's crazy that you you actually met him. But, I know, uh, so bizarre, yeah. so bizarre. And I wasn't sure he'd remember either. I know, it's like I was, I was just um, I'm just gonna plug my phone in. So I was uh, I was in two minds as well. I was, gonna say, is, I, was I thought, is he gonna think it's really? Am I, is it really creepy if I if I just message him? When like, what if it's not him? Yeah, you yeah. Know? And I just thought, I'm just gonna have to do it because I'm sure it's him. And um. And yeah, it was him. Yeah, but um, <laughs> such a cool, yeah, really cool guy. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I I discovered this book through you. I think you posted about it on your your Facebook or Instagram or somewhere. And did yeah, a little while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife, it's been a dream of hers, like since she's been a kid, to live in a van one day. And really, but, she, but it was always kind of a, like a dream, like she never truly considered it and yeah since we've been together we've started talking more and more about it and but never like actually committed to doing it one day or whatever yeah uh, and then uh one day we were i was back home in belgium and she was uh, i forget where she was but we weren't together and i had bought the book and okay. i called her and i showed her the book on on facetime or whatever and yeah. she just started crying because <laughs> oh, really? for her it was like this this dream that was kind of coming true like kind of a commitment on my part to, yeah. to be like yeah i'm i'm down for this because it's quite uh, a like commitment um it, it's mate that's so wonderful to hear um yeah and, and i really do think i'm, I'm gonna say now on, on that topic that what mike does as well very well is he he explains how easy it is to turn that like dream into a reality because yeah. I, I have a lot of conversations with people about it um and it's people say oh, i've always wanted to do it you know but but this and but that and but this and you know it's just always been a dream and mm -hmm. it is a dream and obviously it's it, it requires certain things to make that dream come true but it's really it's a lot easier i think than than people realize yeah. to do yeah. that and there's so much so obviously there's this book which is a very practical one if people are interested uh, yeah how to live a, in a van and travel and it's really just a, a manual like step by step what you need how you do it how you go about yeah. it security yeah. food yeah. water uh, yeah. like very practical um it is. but there's so much stuff on the internet like my wife now she knows everything about vans and long yeah. wheel based short wheel based extended yeah. not extended like yeah everything <laughs> yeah. and there's as you said there's like templates that you can just get off the internet on how yeah. to convert a van yeah you can you can if you have the money you can buy a van that's already converted if you want yeah. to um so we haven't done it yet but it's our our next step in our journey is to is to do that so Amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious like how, what is like uh van living van traveling what has it kind of brought to you in your life what have you discovered uh all that stuff <laughs> It's the, again, since I was young, my, um, my mum's asked me to, not to say this because she thinks it's a bad thing, but, um, we moved, we moved a lot when I was a kid, we moved about six times, um, which was quite a lot. And I, I absolutely loved it. And it, mm. I think for me that really, I didn't like to stay in one place for too long. So we'd find a house and my mum's, she's got horses and we were, we, she, we were always looking for somewhere that had sort of enough land um so it's a little bit of a farm and so we'd move from place to place um and my dad would do a bit of work with the house and do the house up and then we'd sell it on and and i really i loved that moving a lot and i think it's it gave me a real thirst for travel and a thirst to not be in one place for too long 
Mm. And, and I can feel, you know, I lived in London for about seven years and even after a few years, I was getting this sort of itch and I was like, I'm, I'm ready to go somewhere else. I'm ready to move on. And, and I think that really, there was a sort of a light bulb moment where I thought, well, you have always wanted a van and you love traveling and I love camping, you know, I love roughing mm. it. And I love, I love having to, um, you know, boil the kettle and sort of just to, to, to wash the dishes and all that kind of stuff and everything that came with camping. And that's something we did a lot when I was a kid as well. We had a caravan and I just fell in love with it. Waking up, there's this one time my family and I, were in, um, we went to Wales or the lakes and we camped on this slope and you sort of open the tent in the morning and there's just the mountain range in front of you. And that was just, that was life for me. Mm. And the, that was just what spurred me on. I thought, well, I'm just going to get a van. And um, so I got a little one off my auntie. Um, it's the, now Steve BC has actually got that van now. Yeah, I saw that. that. Van <laughs> <laughs> There's a van community in within Drone Base now. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> like start beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was that the the entry level. It was really basic. I just put a bed in there and I had a little camping stove and just a <coughs> thing you fill up with water and some sort of sterilization tablets and. I was just going to the toilet in, you know, in public, like public loos, like all over Europe. There's, there's, there's so many and showering, you know, on the beach and swimming in lakes and stuff. And, and I think just, it's the freedom really. It's, mm. it's that, that freedom that you, that is so important that you just don't get. And I think it's, it's a lot, a lot of people, there's, there's not a lot of security or routine in it. And I think that puts mm. a lot of people off. But again, I really just thrive on that, not knowing where I'm going to be that night and not knowing where I'm going to wake up in the morning. and Being a nomad, really, it's just incredible. It's hard to describe until you've done it, but it's yeah. it's just... And I think that's the thing, like, with your wife, like, it, it is a dream to... And you've seen all these videos on Instagram, and, and I think the reality of van life is very different to how yeah. it's <laughs> Yeah, now she, she sees, like, obviously she follows every single van, like, account yeah. on instagram but she also sees now these videos on youtube of like 10 things they don't tell you about living in a exactly. van and all that kind of exactly. stuff so, <laughs> and also yeah. i think those are the that's almost the other end of the scale as well yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> it's all extreme on on instagram but there are you know there are times when laura and i my girlfriend like we drove we had an app that tells us where we could stay for free and I think we we'd been driving most of the day to get to this little spot in Poland and we sort of got there and we couldn't access it. There was like a low bridge and the whole thing was all cut off. So we drove somewhere else and it was basically down this really small little track um, into this sort of this small wooded area. And there was kind of little buildings with like graffiti all over them and and then we, we sort of, there are times where we feel, definitely feel safer than other times. And, you know, you spend quite a lot of time driving around just to try and find somewhere that you feel comfortable enough to sleep. Because you have to, obviously, it sounds crazy to say, it, but you have to feel comfortable in yeah. order to sleep, you know. <laughs> so if you're, a lot of the times I'm sort of, I was, especially when I was on my own, I'd rock up somewhere in the middle of nowhere, really. And, you know, every little noise you hear and every little squeak or you like, you just wake up, what's that? Or if there's a light that's coming and you're in the middle of nowhere, you think, who's this? And yeah. am I going to get told to move on? And I think that's the thing when you've done it a little while, that's definitely, um, that gets easier. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an incredible thing. You know, I, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Are, are you, are you heading back on the road once stuff really opens up again now or what are your plans i think so we've actually because steve's got the old van we've, we've got a new van that we're doing up a okay. bigger one uh, it's a peugeot boxer so it's a lot longer and a lot higher so i couldn't yeah. stand up in the old one okay but we're um we're in the middle of um in we're in the middle of doing that up. obviously with the album release things have been put on hold a little bit but we're hoping to get that done by the end of pretty much by the end of october mm. Maybe end of November, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's it's getting there, yeah. And then we, yeah, we're just going to go off. We'll probably go up to Scotland, maybe. Oh, and nice. Go Wales, and we tend to follow the gigs 
Um, so we sort of drive, spend a week getting from one show to the other show. And, ah, cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, it, it is amazing. I mean, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Yeah. I had a yeah. bit of a similar like idea, but for the podcast, like if we managed to convert it and I could do the podcast in person with people and I could yeah. just travel like in the UK and invite people in the van and do the podcast in the van, like Mate, that'd be that's, sick. That's <laughs> it. I had the same, a really similar idea, funnily enough. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just, just drive and meet people and yeah, invite exactly. them into the van for a cup of tea and exactly. yeah, chat, chat with them face to face. Yeah. You, you should do it, man. That'd be amazing. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. could try again. I would, I would advise like tr trying it for a week or two and just hiring a yeah. van maybe and just seeing, seeing if you enjoy it and if it's for you. And yeah, I mean, yeah. you, I, yeah, I guarantee that you'd absolutely adore, adore it. And I, yeah, wholeheartedly support you in your van journey. Yeah. If you need help, I know, I think that the, the best advice I could give you would be to just find one source that you think you trust and just go with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll decide what insulation you want and then you'll find something <laughs> there which tells you not to go with that insulation <laughs> and then you'll decide on that and there'll be another video. And there are, there are so many videos, as you know, online and like, this mm. is why Mike's so good van dog traveler, because he's so practical mm. and there's another, um, another website that we use called climbing van. Okay. And there are a couple who have just converted a sprinter and they, they've essentially created a website, which pulls all the information that they've gathered in their process and laid it all out in one nice little mm. website, which is really cool. Yeah. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. It's a bit like music production. If you spend too much time on YouTube, it's like you can yeah. side chain 10 different ways and it's like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just overwhelming really. There's yeah, just too yeah. information out there. Yeah. There really is. <laughs> And you know, again, like we've, we've, it's the same, like you say, with music production, you have to, you have to sort of go down a certain route and if it's not working, then it just hasn't worked and you kind of start again with it. Yeah. 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 That's you, cool, talk, man. you talked a bit about, uh, I don't know how you are for time. If you still have a bit of time or. Yeah, no, it's cool. What time? Ten, um, ten to six. Oh yeah. That's cool, mate. Yeah. I've still got a bit of time. No worries. Okay, cool. Cause there's, yeah, if you like one other topic I wanted to chat to you about, uh, obviously as much as you feel comfortable talking about it, I don't want to <laughs> force anything, but you've That's talked okay. about like meditation and from, again, uh, we've never spoken before, but what, from what I pick up and your music and all that, you seem quite a like spiritual person. And mm. I was just kind of curious what were kind of your, I guess, guiding philosophies or principles or, um, yeah, your guiding principles in your life. Yeah, I um, I went through quite a low patch um several years ago, um, where I was feeling very depressed, and it was after the kind of after the first album came out, not directly, but it was that one and during the second album, um, it's sort of I'd never really sort of struggled with my mental health much um, until that point, so it came. I think it was, it was almost like the whole whirlwind of being signed and becoming a producer and all of a sudden being in that world. And I think it sort of, it was a bit like a, almost a hangover from it in a way. Mm. I, I saw it as a, as a real adjusting to that life was, I, I think I found it quite difficult and it took a while before I, before I sort of settled into it. And at the time it was really Buddhism that, that kind of got me out of that mindset, which made me, it switched the way I felt about the world. And I was feeling quite a victim completely inexplicably really, because at that time, arguably I, my dream had always been to write music and, yeah. and to live from it. And, and that was happening. And, and I, and, but I was feeling very, very reckless and very, I wasn't sure, you know, why I was feeling that way, but I felt very lost which is quite strange. And I wasn't, couldn't put my finger on why. And I discovered Buddhism and I started meditating. Well, I'd been meditating before and obviously begin by letting go was, was about meditation. Mm. Um, so I was, I was definitely aware of meditation and been practicing it and, but I'd never really properly got into it, you know, and same with Buddhism. I sort of discovered Buddhism through meditation and, and that really opened my eyes to 
a, switching from feeling very distant and rejected by the world or rejected is not the right, right word actually, but feeling lost within the world yeah. to feeling a part of it and feeling the world inside you and knowing that you're connected to everything, mm. which is really what meditation has helped me to realize um as well as buddhism and i think that was a very much a turning point for me mm. the way i related to myself the way i was relating to other people um, um just having a love finding my love again for everything um mm. and i think that's that stayed with me and, and luckily you know i haven't had any other sort of bouts of depression or my mental health's been very stable and generally yeah. quite, a, quite a peaceful and happy guy now, which is great. Um, so I think I, I put a lot of it, like if I, if I'm particularly busy, sometimes I won't meditate quite as often as I would like. And, and I can feel you, I can, you can sort of, you can tell when you haven't meditated. Mm. And you, you start to, you do start to slip a little bit into this feeling of it's, I think it's a bit of an apathy and it's a disconnection with the world around you, the mm. disconnection with the people around you, which is really the most beautiful thing about meditation is it connects you with everything around you, mm. um, it connects you to the universe and you can really feel it when you haven't been meditating And this trip to Malta. My girlfriend and I decided that we were going to be pretty much sober the whole time, um, which felt amazing because shows have started up again. It was, it's been quite easy to get back into that yeah. kind of party, party lifestyle and yeah. you've kind of thrown back in the deep end a little bit. So it's after a good sort of 18 months, it had been, it was quite hard to adjust to being back in that world again. And yeah. a couple of nights maybe where we got a bit carried away and we, we decided, um, in Malta, we were just going to feel, you know, wake up really early. We were getting up with the sun. Ah, nice. And meditating and taking it really easy and, you know, just having sort of the odd glass of wine here and there. And I think previously we might have been tempted to go to some of the bars in the evening and have get a bit, have a few drinks and stuff, but we really felt really grounded and it was quite a, quite a spiritual trip, really, exploring mm. a lot and, meditating a lot and yeah. yeah and it's you know i wouldn't class i wouldn't sort of class myself as a particularly spiritual person but i would be very lost if it wasn't for meditation i think yeah. that's really the thing that it's kind of guaranteed happiness you know <laughs> it, it, it sounds it sounds it sounds pretty crazy and and it's it's easy to say oh well you should meditate more and people struggle because they feel as though medit in meditation, you have to sort of attain something. You have to get to a point where oh, I can't do meditation because I can't stop my mind or mm. I, I could do it for five minutes, but then my mind starts racing. And, and it's just the act of sitting down even for five minutes and not doing anything, just trying to follow your breath. Mm. Even if your mind races a lot, really that the longer the, the more you do that, the more you, you settle and you find peace and, you you become less an, like less anxious and you become less distressed and you just become I think with peacefulness comes happiness a lot of the time yeah. yeah it's easier you find it easier to solve problems you find it easier to to deal with stuff that you couldn't deal with before you become more tolerant which I think is a, is a huge thing mm. really um, and then you you sort of you take pleasure in in very simple things and you, you don't feel the need to distract yourself mm. from life. Yeah. Which is what I was doing a lot when I was low, I was trying to find anything to try and distract me. I was drinking a lot or I was constantly trying to see people just to try and distract myself from, from yeah, staying the, busy. Yeah. Yeah. From the, the feeling, you know, just the yeah, feeling yeah. of life. And, yeah. And I think again, being, being on the road and, being on my own sometimes from with my girlfriend traveling and waking up in nature and being a part of nature really helps as well yeah yeah
dude, you should write a book about meditation. That was like the best pitch I've ever heard. And I've talked, <laughs> I've talked a lot about meditation with different people, but that's like the best pitch I've ever heard. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's a difficult thing to, I've tried to post about it a few times, but it's a difficult thing to try and articulate, you know, yeah. and I think I do worry sometimes that I, I do tend to waffle a little bit, but um, yeah, maybe I'll, I could write something. I'd like to write a book about sort of just experiences with travel and, and meditation. Yeah. I, I think it's, I, th I think it's so important to meditate. And I genuinely think that a lot of people don't realize that you meditation is not necessarily a thing you have to become good at in a way it, it's, it's, it does take, practice to, to be able to slow your mind down but just the act yeah. of meditation is what it's all about yeah to get to a point where i feel like i'm at a point now where i'm very aware of uh, my emotions if i'm starting to get a little bit frustrated or a little bit angry or the other way around if i'm if i'm feeling happy or anything it's there's this kind of you get this preliminary switch that happens it's like right you're getting angry now yeah, you know? yeah. so so why are you getting angry and remember that you don't need to get angry and that, that everything's okay and it's really yeah. just plunking yourself right in the present moment and realizing that everything's okay mm. and then the, the more you meditate the more that feeling sustains really and then you kind of wake up in the morning and you feel good and you go to bed at night and you feel good and mm. everything's good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sounds really... like absolute goals <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I definitely echo what you said about like it's it's the practice. It's like if you if you go to the gym, the goal isn't to become the biggest bodybuilder in the world. Like, exactly. like that's not your exactly. goal. The goal is to actually go there and exercise. Exactly. And everybody can relate to that. So why yeah. not meditation? Exactly. And that is exactly the same. It's a really good analogy. You know, you wouldn't go to the gym one day and then get home and lift up your shirt and say, why haven't I got abs? You know, and that's it. So exactly. it's like, well, I'm, not, I'm not going to the gym anymore because... I've been Clearly once. It doesn't and I, work. <laughs> and I didn't get muscles, so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. But yeah, no, it's, it's it is amazing, you know. And I'm I do plan on trying to do some kind of video or some sort of post about meditation, and just just on how how it's how it's helped me through some really difficult times. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, definitely. Uh, it's been an awesome chat, man. Really enjoyed this one. Uh, Same, man. Really enlightening. Yeah. Um, I'm it's one of those ones where I, I feel like we could go on for another couple of hours, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to be respectful, respectful of your time. So I'm going to close it off with just a few questions from, from my listeners. Um, posted yeah. on Instagram and, and they had a few questions for you. So uh, just going to cool. shoot them your way. Um, Mike Drop from, from Solvent asks, uh, which has been one of your uh, favorite remix uh, of popular songs? Uh, he says, I really like Better Half of Me and War Rages oh, cool. On. Oh, sweet. Yeah, War Rages On. Um, but one of my favorite remixes that I did was one of the first ones I did, which was um, Fade by Jack Cobb. Mm -hmm. um, I did a VIP version and I did a, um, I did a, a normal, just a, a non-VIP one, the first one. And it's kind of got these clicky, sort of a clicky halftime sort of thing. And that was one of the first remixes I'd done. And I really, really, really enjoyed that one. Yeah. Mm. I think, yeah, it's great to do when you really get into a song, when you're remixing it and you, you really switch it up to yeah. be part of your own. It's a great thing. Yeah. yeah. I do love remixes. I think that's my favorite one that okay. I've done. Yeah. Um, Sean asks, uh, when you were starting out, how did you overcome self-doubt? I think that's a, a very common one to ask. Wow, so. that, that really is. And it's such a difficult one to yeah. answer. Um, I think this is going to sound, maybe this sounds a little bit obvious, um, but it's about realizing and remembering that you are just starting out. So if you're doubting it's very common for us all to compare ourselves i still do it compare ourselves to other producers compare your songs to other people's songs and get frustrated about you know why isn't my tune sounding like this tune and it's about just allowing yourself to 
to learn and and not to get too frustrated in and it's it's i know it's more about confidence um so i think it's i think it's important to everyone every every producer is different and everyone's musical journey is different and i would just say don't get too bogged down in how you think other people would perceive your music and just use it as a personal journey yeah. and it will be little things like you've you just come across a really great snare and it's it's uh, all of your other tunes were lacking that particular thing and mm. you go through there are there are sort of shifts and you go through periods where nothing's sounding right but then you'll just have that one amazing day where everything sounds fantastic yeah and i think it's just about yeah just giving yourself a pat on the back and just to say look i'm just starting out here mm. and it doesn't matter that my tune doesn't sound exactly how i want it or I none of my tunes ever ever sound exactly as i want them to mm. you know you just have to get to a point where you're like okay that's done now really that's the that's best thing <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah. it is such a diff it is such a difficult thing to overcome but yeah. don't put too much pressure on yourself i would say yeah definitely. just allow it yeah and love just love yourself and love the tune that you're making yeah. roll with it really uh sammy hall asks what's your favorite place to make music wow um probably the middle of the forest forest ah i thought yeah. I, i thought you were gonna say the sea because you oh well are, or the sea. Lake. <laughs> it's it, it, well, i mean for finland honestly that was the most one of the most amazing experiences of my life because I was in the middle of the forest but and by the sea and so it kind of ticked all the boxes and I was completely on my own and again like being inspired I couldn't have a studio in the middle of London that I go to every morning at nine and leave every night at six and mm. I, I just wouldn't have any inspiration so I think it's I think obviously a lot of people would be very inspired if they were on their own in a hut in the middle of the forest by the yeah. sea with a sauna you know so I definitely <laughs> I gave myself every chance I could yeah, yeah, of making a great album, but yeah, yeah. Um, definitely anywhere on my own in the middle of nature, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, Mac asks, I think we've touched on this, but do you find a different mindset when you're producing on a laptop when you're on the road versus, I guess, in the city? Yeah, so. no, def and definitely. Yeah. As I said, it's, it's. I was there's in one time I've mentioned a few times where the first time I drove through Austria and there's we sort of turn a road and then these mountains pretty much kind of appear out of nowhere it's 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 amazing and I was on my own and I had my laptop in the back of the van and I was just immediately I was I could hear this piano this piano line just came into my head this melody I pretty much just screeched to a halt you know on this <laughs> <laughs> in a leg by and i was like this is it this is it i could hear i could hear the song playing i could see the video in front of me and i jumped into the back of the back of the van put my headphones on and i just i just played it on my keyboard um, oh, well. <laughs> my actual yeah laptop keyboard because i couldn't find my little portable yeah. one my, my mid my little mini one Um, just to get the on the most basic piano thing I could get down, just because that was that moment of inspiration. T time was of the essence. You had to it, it, yeah, write it down. It, it was, and then and then after that, I sort of sat there, like looking out the window, and then started developing the tune. It's just it's just an amazing thing mm. to be. Yeah. And again, as a lot of the time, I'll I'll the ideas will always start on the laptop on the road, mm. and then sort of bring them back to the studio. It's actually at my parents' house. There's a little, um, it's like a little converted, the garage is converted into a little studio. So yeah, mm. it's an amazing thing. Really. Yeah. All right. La last two here uh, from NATO Core, who's uh, a good Patreon, Patreon of the show. So thanks to you. Cool. Um, he asks, what are your future plans with guitar and voice? How will you one up yourself down the road? That's a tricky one. That is a tricky one. Um, I would love to do uh, <coughs> like a folk album, mm -hmm. like Bon Iver with his with 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 their first album, or Justin's first album. Where again, when he went and sat in a little hut in in Canada somewhere, I think, and wrote a whole album on just the acoustic. Um, I would absolutely love to do that because it's a real challenge. 
a lot of the songs will start, my songs will start on the guitar and the and vocals, and then you just add everything else to it. But I've written quite a lot of songs. Um, and that's why I wanted to do those isolation jams as well. Yeah. Just sort of covering my own music just on guitar. And I think it works. Um, so it'd be really cool to do an, yeah. a, a folk, an acoustic folk album, really, with just so, loads, yeah. um, loads of atmosphere and, yeah, yeah, see how it sounds, really. That'd be really cool. Yeah, and the yeah. thing with, like, people don't realise with acoustic music like that, your melodies have to be so much stronger because yeah. you don't have all the fluff of the pads yeah. and stuff that you can add on. So it has to be exactly. really strong. <laughs> it does. It really does. Yeah, that's the thing. And, it's, and that's, that's why I say it's a challenge, you know, because you're it's raw and it's just you and the guitar. Yeah. But yeah, I really love that way of writing. So I might do yeah. that. Keep, yeah, keep you posted on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And finally, from, from NATO Core, probably more on the production side, but talking about lushness, how do you get your lush reverbs and frozen atmospheres in your productions? Any tips? That's a, yeah, that's a cool one. Um, I do use a lot of reverb and put my hands up. I probably <laughs> wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for reverb. <laughs> but I use very long tailed reverbs. Um, I use, there's a lot of stuff within Reason, which is the, the software that I use. Um, but I use Valhalla reverb a lot. And I'll basically, I'll bring the mix down, but I'll put the decay really high so that there's always on certain instruments I'll, i do it a lot on the piano it's it's almost like the wash is there um but you don't necessarily it doesn't make the whole thing too wet mm -hmm. <clears throat> that makes sense so yeah. there's this long tail on almost all of a lot of the stuff i do it with the vocals and with guitar to everything other than the drums and the bass a lot of the time okay um so it's just yeah whack everything up on full and then bring the mix right down pretty much. But yeah. there is a very, yeah, there's this very specific one that I use that I made within reason, um, which wouldn't make a lot of sense to non reason users because this is before they, this is all built into reason. Um, and it's, it's not a VST. So it's, a, it's, it's, okay. it's using reasons own, um, like Start, reverb stuck plug in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, and just sort of playing around with that, but mm. yeah, hope that yeah. answers the question. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think reverb is a tricky one because people tend to put a lot of reverb to make stuff sound good, but then it can get very muddy very quickly. So yeah, it's a question it, of EQing out and yeah, and side chaining your reverb and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. It is, but I do, I do sometimes listen to a tune i make and i'm like there's just way way too much <laughs> this is stupid <laughs> you gotta dial it down a bit mate you have to <laughs> yeah uh, that's brilliant I do, uh, I, get asked, I do get asked that quite a lot about the reverb so i might do i might do a little yeah. a, a little tutorial on it maybe sometime definitely dude it's been a pleasure love this chat uh, thank you yeah great finally meeting you um same congrats again yeah. on the album and thank uh, you for and yeah it's been great to chat man yeah it's been really really nice yeah my pleasure um anything you want to close off on any upcoming events you have or uh, projects or stuff you want to promote there's a project and i know it's one of those things where i can't say too much about it mm. but there is we're working on a visual component to um some of the songs on on neon dust um which is going to be pretty much the sort of a a feature length kind of um a long music video essentially okay um, that along with um six of the tunes from the album um so we're working on that at the moment and we're gonna do a um kind of a screening i'm not even sure if i should be talking about this so i might have to yeah might you have to can clarify, check clarify with the label yeah sure. but uh, we're going to do uh, sort of we're going to do a screening of it which is going to act as a bit of a, a sort of an album launch mm. party sort of thing oh, and nice. i think we're going to try and do a guided meditation as well after that that'd be sick that'd be really yeah. cool actually yeah i think we're going to try i'm going to try and do some sort of beatless ambient versions of some of the songs from the undust and have oh, it as nice. the, the soundtrack to a, a meditation that we'll do afterwards so that's <laughs> we're working on that right now so hopefully that's gonna that's gonna be really cool sounds awesome great man yeah. really looking forward to that and hearing how it goes but uh yeah in the meantime all the best and uh 
maybe we'll see each other in in our vans somewhere in the future. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> honestly, yeah. Um, all the best for you and like all the best with the band. And if you honestly, if you need, if I can give you any help at all, then please just give me a shout. Appreciate that. All right, nice man. Fun. Cheers. Cheers, dude.